Hey folks, it's Alex here, and I'm here to talk to you today about linear regression and correlation analysis. We've had some discussions about that in previous screencasts, so this should be uh, dovetailing with some of those other screencasts and some of the other information. But I wanted to uh, specifically talk today about how we can, in some ways, visualize the relationships that we're, we're trying to either describe or estimate and what some of the calculations look like in terms of the, the, the math behind it and what that means, but also how we can use that kind of information to better interpret the results that we get when we run these uh, analyses with statistical software programs. So I, it hopefully will be a very helpful uh, set of slides and descriptions that we're going to go through. Well, I have some uh, pretty straightforward goals for our screencasts on uh, correlation and linear regression today. After working through these with me, you should be able to calculate and interpret the simple correlation between two variables. You should be able to determine whether the correlation is significant. You should be able to calculate and interpret the simple linear regression equation for a set of data. You should be able to understand the assumptions behind regression analysis and finally determine whether a regression model is significant. Now I have some other goals uh, which if we have time we'll get to although I can't guarantee and perhaps this will be in a different uh, set of screencasts. But there are also ways that we can look at interpreting confidence intervals, um, ways that we can recognize different applications for pre prescriptive uh, prediction and description, um, some ways that uh, we can identify potential problems in using regression analysis, and then what do we do if we have nonlinear relationships. For the most part today though, we're going we're gonna to stick with the basics. One of the first ways to think about what a, a correlation in particular does is to think about visualizing the data using a scatter plot. And it usually shows the relationship or the association between two different variables. Now, when we look at a scatter plot, we're, we're really visualizing a correlation analysis, which measures the strength of association or the linear relationship between those two variables. We are only concerned with the strength of the relationship and also the direction, whether it's positive or negative. We are not trying to apply any sort of causal uh, effect or implication to that. So we're just looking at the strength of the relationship and the direction of the relationship. And quite frankly, I'll also add to that the statistical significance of the relationship. We are not trying to say that there's a causal relationship. So what does it look like? Well, if you have a linear relationship, you can see on the left over here, there are some uh, really interesting forms. It, usually the, the points will group together, either in a positive way or in a negative way. Um, and these are simply the variables on the x-axis and the y-axis. And you plot. So there's a case where uh, the value for one variable, x, and the value for another variable, y, intersect and that's what you plot and so all of these show these plotted points where one variable and another variable intersect for a given set of data linear relationships are simply relationships that you can plot a line through whereas curvilinear what a shock are relationships that have curved uh, lines or cur curved relationships so as the x variable increases y increases at first and then shifts and decreases at the end we can also think about the strength of the relationships, and it essentially means that the tighter the plotted uh, intersections between these two variables are, that the stronger the relationship is. And you can see that these are uh, more narrow or tighter uh, plots than these over here on the weak side. These are much wider distributions of the scores on the scatter plot. And the no relationship is when essentially you have a flat line, right? One of the variables does not change significantly or at all when the other variable changes. And that can be a flat line or it can be just sort of this amorphous blob. Um, but that's usually what it looks like. So we've got an idea of what a linear 
versus a curvilinear relationship looks like, and remember we're focusing on linear, we have an idea of what a strong relationship and a weak relationship would look like among linear uh, correlations or linear regression. And then we have an idea of what no relationship look like, looks like. It's when there's no variation on one of the uh, variable's axes uh, when we have variation in the other, or we can't predict it. We, we have no way of knowing where this is. <laughs> Okay, so what is a correlation coefficient? Well, we can, we can talk about the population and we can talk about the sample. We've done that before. We're often trying to uh, get a statistic as a way to either describe or infer something about the sample. If we're looking at a population correlation coefficient, it's going to measure the strength of the association between those two variables. But what we are more often doing is getting the sample correlation coefficient which is simply an estimate of rho and is used to measure the strength of the linear relationship in the sample observations and we often uh, designate that as R. Now there are some features of rho and R, uh, in particular remember we're thinking about R, uh, that are unique. One is they're unit free. Right? It's, it's a set of numbers that ranges between zero, I'm sorry, between negative one and positive one but the, there's no unit associated with that. There might be some when we interpret it, but, but the values themselves of rho and r are unit free. They do range from negative one to positive one. The closer to negative one, the stronger the negative linear relationship. And the closer to positive one, the stronger the positive linear relationship. And then it, you might have guessed, the closer to zero, the weaker the linear relationship is. So let's take a look at what that looks like. If we had a perfectly negative relationship, in other words, r equals negative 1, here is what that plotted relationship looks like. For every one unit of increase in x, we have one unit of decrease in y. That's, that's perfectly negatively associated. And if we went to the other extreme and we looked at a perfect positive relationship, this, this is it, straight line. For every one unit of increase in x, we have one unit of increase in y. So you'll notice that the way that I'm talking about the relationship uses the term unit. One unit of increase in x associates with one unit of increase in y, for example, in, in this positive uh, scatter plot. But the value itself, this plus one, that is unit free. And then if we wanted to look at no relationship, here we go, uh, r equals zero. There is a flat line that can be plotted. In other words, for every one unit of increase in x, there is an estimated zero <laughs> units of increase in y. Right. And then what does it look like in between? So for example, if we had a plus 0.3 for our, our correlation coefficient, it could come from this kind of a grouping. This would be kind of weak. You can see how wide this distribution is. But there is a straight line that can be plotted through that. And it's for every one unit of x, you have 0.3 uh, units of y increasing on average. For our uh, a sample of a negative correlation association, we have r equals negative 0.6. Now this is a little tighter. And so this, this coefficient is a little stronger, a little larger, right? But it is negative. And so you can see how when we plot these, we can visualize the association that, that the R coefficients represent. Now, if we wanted to calculate it out, it, it really is less complicated than it looks in this equation. Um, this is simply uh, looking at a couple of different relationships. This is R, you know that. Sigma stands for sum. So this is adding, this right here, is an individual score for the um, variable x minus the mean of that variable. And this is an individual score for the variable y. And this is the mean of that variable. And so you're looking at the differences between each individual score and the mean for both variables multiplied by each other and summed. 
And then on the bottom here, you're simply taking the square root of another way of thinking about variation between each individual score and the mean for that variable. And if you wrote it out a little more uh, lengthy, you would get this algebraic equivalent. Now let's do an example, an easy one. Uh, we're not even going to talk about education. We're just going to talk about a straightforward uh, calculation example. If we had wanted to look at the relationship between the height of a tree and the trunk diameter of a tree, and here's a tree, you just remember what we're talking about. And let's say that tree height is y and trunk diameter is x. And we have all the values for tree height listed here and all the values for trunk diameter listed here for a sample of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trees. Okay? And we're simply going to calculate that if we wanted to write it out. So we have y, we have x, we have x times y, we have y squared, and we have x squared. And then we have the sums down here at the bottom of each of those. <clears throat> and if we wanted to, we could plot it. So for example, uh, y is 35, x is 8. Y is 35, X, X is 8. Right, so that's that one case right there, the intersection. And if we plotted all of them, this is what we get. If we calculate out the equation using the simple table that we set up here, um, we get this. And if you solve it, it's 0.886. This is a relatively strong positive linear association between x and y. And if we plotted that, it would look like that. Okay. That's all it is. It's a measure of the uh, relationship, its strength, its direction, and eventually we'll get to its statistical significance. So we know that this is positive. We know that it is relatively strong because it's very close to 1. And when we look at it, it looks like a tight linear distribution. Now, if we wanted to, we could calculate this using Excel or SPSS or many other different uh, ways. And the, the way that it usually looks is that it'll have a table where each of the variables are listed in both the rows and the columns. Obviously, each variable is perfectly associated with itself. <laughs> right? And then when you have the uh, correlation between the two variables, there it is. There's the coefficient that we had right back here. It's the same one. Now, how do we think about significance testing? Uh, for that, we're going to pause and we'll come back to it in the next screencast in this series.